Hey everybody, how you doing? It's July 8th, um, the day after my birthday, and I just want to just recap. It was a wonderful day. Hundreds of people just were kind and said happy birthday, and I just want to say that, you know, <clears throat> for me that means a lot, and that's really all I need, you know. It's like, I try to do business and I sell records, and maybe a tenth of the people that greeted me, or less, buy my records, but that's not the point. You know, um, the point is not that everyone that's nice to me, you know, I should be able to try to make a buck off. What's wonderful to me is that that's really all it takes. Is just be nice, you know, to say happy birthday and then I never see you again for a year or two years. That's fine with me. That's much better than, you know, anything else, you know. Um, I really appreciate it, you know. It's whatever reason everybody felt the urge to wish me happy happy birthday and it is literally it's I may have gotten close to a thousand maybe more than a thousand happy birthday wishes on Facebook for whatever reason that everyone wanted to greet me thank you it feels good I thought this was interesting Facebook actually sent me a card wishing me happy birthday that's never happened before I thought it was weird I also noticed that my Google my Google uh, page was um, had birthday candles and cakes. Is that a is that a holdover from Fourth of July or do they know it's my birthday? Which of course they do because of my Google information. But um, just a really really nice day, and I got a few few gifts. Um, my little birth I had a little birthday hang at the Hipstop Record Shop. A small group of people came, but the people that came were really important to me. Trevor stopped by Tim Guthrie who did my album artwork and my son and his mom came and her present husband. That meant the most that my boy David Loki came down for my birthday. You know, those little things warm my heart and that's just, that's what I'm focused on, you know, is the con the true content of my life as opposed to um, being like a bean counter. How much do I have? How much do I have? That don't mean shit, you know? That whole, the whole, um, thank you everyone that sent me money though. Some people sent me money and some people bought records. People bought records at, at my hang. Thanks for that, but that's not, I forget what I was about to say, you know, thank you for that. You know, the money is needed to, to survive and to function. But man, I'm so glad that that is just not the focus. That is not what life is about, is counting numbers. And what a pathetic way to live. To me, I know there's a lot of people that really, you love it, you know. How much do I got? You know, check my account. Always in touch with the bank, you know, and shit like that. Not for, not for me. I got a few musical gifts yesterday. One was complete, all of them unexpected. Um, one is an absolute blow away, and I'll share that in a minute. The first one I'll show is thank you, John Chartrand. John Chartrand is a friend and, a, and and obviously a fan here in Omaha. And he stopped by the shop. He was out on a bike ride, and he brought this by for my birthday. The Mick Rock um, collection of photography. This one is on David Bowie. This is awesome. Comes in this tin with a huge... Um, book of Mick Rock's, Mick Rock's photography. This one of David Bowie is fantastic for my collection because Mick Rock um, early on got tight with Bowie and so he's the one that has taken a lot of really iconic photos of Bowie throughout his career. And it comes with Starman on a red vinyl, um, heavy vinyl disc. Fantastic. It was still sealed, too. Thank you, John. It was sealed. I popped the seal right away when I got it home. Thank you so much. Jesse Cundiff and his partner, Doug, who run Hip Stop, agreed to allow me to have a little hangout down there. And um, sure enough, Jesse, with his bad self, gave me some a couple of gifts. And um, I thank him so much. He gave me Rufus Thomas Do the Funky Chicken. Jesse is just a soul man. He just loves soul music and hip hop. 
And I do too. It's not what I listen to, but he knows that I love it too. And so, and he also knows I like white label promos. And this is badass. A Stax white label promo of um, Rufus Thomas. Do the Punky Chicken. Rufus Thomas is, is important historically for opening doors for blacks in the entertainment industry. Look at him. He's He had to play the clown because he's not... He's not attractive. Smart man. That's how he opened doors. He didn't have the pretty face, so he couldn't do the sex thing, so he he did the clown thing. Um, and it opened doors, and he was willing to go through it, you know. I'm certain that Rufus Thomas has suffered a lot of humiliation while proving points and getting things to happen in his career. So props to Rufus Thomas. And uh, if you don't know about Rufus Thomas, find out. A giant behind the scenes as far as opening doors and and being unrecognized. I think he's unrecognized because he's not a pretty face. People are so shallow. I'm putting everybody on notice. It's always the pretty face that gets remembered. Everything is sex sex runs everything. That's my assessment. It seems to really be true. Thank you, Jesse, for this. And he'd gotten this into the this, this shop and was asking me about it. Transform, stranger in the same land. He wasn't able to find out any information about it. Um, so while we're down there yesterday, I said, well, play this for me. And as it played, it just got better. And I said, I got to have this. I was going to buy it. He gave it to me. It's it's a private press or a small label out of Gainesville, Florida. This was made back, I think, in the 70s. Hide and Zeke Records. Um... It's not worth a lot of money, but this is good. It's not. It's not. But it, it's not about being worth money. It's like this is good music. It starts off kind of folky and soft, and it gets proggy, you know, where they start to, you know, do some instrumental uh, workouts, which is what I love. Transform, a great addition to my collection. Thank you, Jesse, if you see this. Unexpectedly, yesterday in the mail, I received a gift from a long, a, a good friend of mine who lives in Madison, was Milwaukee. We go back to uh, teen years, Ralph. I just love the man dearly, and he's a very, very spiritual man. Um, I wasn't expecting this, and this is a grail. This is this means the world to me. He sent me the black l vinyl version of Faust, their first album. This means so much to me. I was with Ralph when he bought this back in the 70s at Dirt Cheap Records in Lincoln. It was maybe 1970, I can't remember, 75 or so. We were on our way down to Lincoln from Omaha to see Gordon Lightfoot in concert. It was fantastic. I wept. Gordon Lightfoot was so good. Just fantastic. And, you know, at that time, I just, you know, I was, I didn't have any money, you know. So most of the time when we go to the record stores, all I could do was look. Ralph had some money, so he was able to buy this, you know. You know, of course, you know. I, I won't say I've coveted it all these years, but I've always wished, you know. I wished I could have bought it, you know. So it means more than words can say that Ralph finally is allowing me to own this. And the fact that it's his copy, the one that he bought, I can't tell you how much that means to me. It includes his, you know, from the, from the music Library of Ralph Stewart. I'm not taking that sticker off. I like to, I usually take stickers off. This just makes I can't tell you how much this means to me. Ralph is is, is like he's, he's like a soul brother to me. I don't talk to people all the time. I'm not, I'm not the kind of friend that has to always be in your face and checking in with you to feel like I'm close to you. I may talk to Ralph maybe once or twice a year. Sometimes years go by and we don't talk. But he's always here, and I consider him like one of my closest friends. This just means so much. This coming unexpectedly is, it's proof of our of our our friendship. It's he's one of my closest friends. You know, to me, I understand that children, the way that you express love and also how you um, treat children correctly is time. They need time. You need to spend time with them. And as we get older, that to me is not so necessary. And so I'm not the kind of adult that has to be checked on all the time and always 
being reassured that we're friends. It's like, you can leave me the hell alone for a long time, and I'm fine. I still love you, and when I see you, it's cool, you know. So Ralph is just one of my fa favorite people. He's one of my favorite people. I'm going to keep it short, folks. I could just talk, 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 talk. I just want to thank you all for being kind. You know what I'm saying? Just thank you for being kind. And whatever it means, whatever it doesn't mean, the fact that you, all of you, all of you who felt moved to say happy birthday to me or to drop me a line, thank you. Thank you. I take it at least in part as proof that it really is true that if you are true to yourself, be honest, be who you really are, um, that, that'll, that'll see you through. Trying to make people like you, trying to front, trying to be phony. The returns from those things are exactly that. You know, if it's phony, then the return is phony. And this just feels great, you know. I just feel really, I feel loved and appreciated. And no shame in my game. No shame in my game. No shame in my game at all, you know. People, you know, pe there's always detractors. That's why I say these things. There's always haters. People that just want to, for whatever reason, be opposition, opposite to you. That's life, you know. But I take, I'm going to say it again, and I, I, I do th share this because I think other people need this message. I take no responsibility for other people's negatives towards me. That's on them. And, and some of you folks that need that message, work it, know it, live it by that. Try to, try to, this is another thing I've said recently that I want to say again. I think that more, more people would benefit from realizing that we don't observe ourselves enough. We're always in the middle of what we're doing and we don't observe ourselves. Try to take, try to step outside the situation and observe yourself and see what you're doing. See if you're See if this is really the way you want to be going about, about things, because especially if you're having a life that's full of crap, take a look at how you take a look at what what how you're operating. There surely there's something you can do to make it better. Surely there's something you can do to make it better. Last thing I'll say is it just means the world to me that my kids David and Sarah have just let me know. I really kind of thought these kids that I helped to raise that that my involvement was peripheral and that I really, you know, that wasn't that big of a deal, you know, what I did, but apparently so, you know. Both David and Sarah still like for me to refer to them as my children. Ah, oh, that, that really... What can money buy that can compare to that feeling? Nothing, if you ask me. Of course, I've never been rich, but I don't think, I can't imagine that something temporal that I can hold in my hand, like a piece of gold, could possibly mean that as much as as the love that people give to me freely. I, I, how could that compare? I don't think so.